talk to you today about the law of the world versus the law of Christ. Those that are in Christ are no longer under the law. Uh, the law came by Moses, but grace and truth have come by Jesus Christ. And thank God, we're in the age, we're in the covenant of grace. We're in the covenant of mercy. Uh, we're not in, under the covenant of law. So we're thankful that we're not under that law of Moses. And we see that law of Moses really in many respects working even in America. Our systems of law have been organized based on really, in a lot of ways, the law of Moses. And you can look at just a few of the commandments from the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not murder uh, or steal or lie, uh, perjure, be a perjurer. Those things are all offenses. But there's a higher law that we've been called unto. And we've been called out of the wrath of the world. That as long as you're under the law, you're under wrath. So over in Ephesians, the second chapter, uh, Paul wrote here saying, And you he made alive when you were spiritually dead and separated from him because of your transgressions and sins in which you once walked. You were following the ways of this world, influenced by this present age, in accordance with the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who is now at work in the disobedient. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by the sinful self, indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were by nature children under the sentence of God's wrath just like the rest of mankind. Now that's the amplified version, Ephesians the second chapter, verse one through three. Uh, main point here, we were by, ch by nature children of wrath, just like the rest, just like the rest of mankind. Well, there's a wrath that works. Uh, and that wrath, if you look at the Greek there of that word that's used all through the New Testament for the wrath or the wrath of God or the righteous retribution of God or the anger of God, the vengeance of God, the indignation of God, uh, that word is orge, orge in the Greek, which means uh, properly desire as a reaching forth or excitement of the mind that is violent passion or abhorrence, or by implication, punishment, anger, indignation, vengeance, wrath. That's the vengeance of God that's poured out upon sin. And there's a law. Thank God that we've been delivered out of that law of sin and death, but sin brings death. There's a righteous retribution that works in the earth, and that doesn't mean that God's angry at everybody that sins. That's not, the, that's not how that law works. That law's already been set in order out here in nature. So that when, when, when sin comes, death follows. That's the law of sin and death. When you miss the mark, the perfect mark of God, and you sin, the vengeance of God follows. Not that he's going around uh, whipping everybody or, or putting to death everybody that does wrong. It's a law. It's been set in order. God created that in the beginning. That, that's the way, that's the nature of God that works out here. As soon as sin comes, death comes. As soon as unrighteous comes, the penalty of unrighteousness comes. It's the law of sin and death and it works out here in the world. As soon as the law is broken, there's a righteous retribution. The wrath of God is wrapped up in that law of sin and death. And here comes death. Here comes destruction. And we were all under that. And we're all under it if we're not in Christ. There's only two places that you can be. In Christ or under the law. Praise God that the Lord has delivered us out from under the law into the grace and mercy and the covenant of life in Christ Jesus. Praise God. But we have to make a distinction between that which is working according to the Spirit and that which is working according to the law. So now I want to go over real quick over to John 3, chapter 3, verse 31. Speaking of the one who comes from above is above all, and that's Christ. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth, that's humanity, and speaks as one from the earth, or that could be looked at as Adam. 
Uh, the first man was of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. The first man is the man of sin, the nature of Adam. The second man is the nature of Christ, he who is from above. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted it has certified that God is truthful. For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. The Father loves the Son and has placed everything in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains on them. Again, this is not God being angry because people reject the Son because people reject God or reject Christ. This is the order of the two laws that are running in the, in the world, in the earth. There's the law of the world and there's the law of sin and death. And uh, we've been delivered out of the law of the world and the law of sin and death and into the law of life in Christ Jesus. Thank God. And as many as hear the voice of the Lord are delivered out of the world. And out of the darkness, out of the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of his dear son, of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, when he says, those that, are, that don't believe in Christ, or don't receive Christ as Lord, are under wrath, it doesn't mean that God's angry at anybody. It means that the law of sin and death is still working because that is where they are. They haven't come out of that law. There's only two places to be. There's only two natures to be in. If you're in the nature of Adam, in the unregenerated place of sin, there's only one way out of sin, and that's through Christ. He's the only avenue. He's the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ said there's no other way to the Father. There's no other way out of this sin-sick world except through Him, through faith in Him, through the Spirit of Christ, through a renewed mind through a renewed spirit, through a new heart. All of those things come through faith in Christ, and it's a living relationship, a personal relationship. That's the only way out of the law of sin and death. He's the only one that can bring anybody unto himself, and he has a time for all people to come unto him and to come to the knowledge of the glory of God that's in Jesus Christ. But for now, there's only one other place to be, and that's in the law of sin and death. And so the wrath of God is working in that life. Not because he's angry at him, because the wrath of God is poured out upon all unbelief and upon all sin. Here's how the law works. Because the law works wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. In other words, once you're out from under that law, you've come up out from under the law and you've come into the Spirit of Christ whereby the Spirit of the Lord works through you, the law of the Spirit, and you walk in accordance with the things of God, not by an outward law, but by an inward dwelling life, by the very life of Christ working through you. Jesus was born under the law as far as his natural man, but he walked in complete accordance with the law of the spirit of life that was in God. Complete obedience to him. Not because of somebody dictating to him what he needed to do, but by the inward dwelling life of the Father that was within him that showed him all those things to do. Everything to do and everything that to say was brought about through the life-giving spirit of the Father that was working in his heart. Praise God. He's come to deliver us out of the kingdom of this darkness, of the wrath of this law, into the righteous grace and truth of Jesus Christ through the Spirit. This is available to all today who hear his voice. 1 Timothy 1 in the Amplified, the 8th verse, says, We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. So there's nothing wrong with the law. We're talking about both the laws of the land and the law of Moses. There's nothing wrong with it as long as it's used properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who, are, who kill their fathers, 
or mothers, for murderers, for the sexual immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted to me. The law is for the lawless, not for a righteous person. If you're walking in righteousness, and you can only walk in righteousness through Christ, You've been delivered into the kingdom of God and you're walking not according to an outward ordinance or to outward commandments, but according to the indwelling spirit, according to the anointing of Christ, who is the anointed one. The anointed one, Jesus, walked in perfection through the spirit, praise God, in complete obedience to the spirit. When you're walking in the spirit, there's no need for law. Law has been removed. And you're no longer under God's wrath. The Lord has presented a way out for us. If we're alive under the law, we're under it. But once we're dead to the law, we're no longer under that law. How do we die to the law? The Lord's made a way for us through the, through the cross. Revelation 14, 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Hallelujah. What a blessing there is in dying to this sinful nature, to the law. That's the power of the cross. Yes, a forgiveness of our past sins. Yes, a propitiation for our sins. Yes, the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But even further than that, a furtherance of that same train of thought is He that takes away the man of sin of the world, the nature of sin of the world, the nature of sin that dwells in all human flesh is crucified with Christ. I am crucified with Christ, I can say, by the Spirit of the living God who dwells within me. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Praise God. And it's the Lord, His new life of the Spirit, that leads us and directs us as we've been born again in Him. Born again from above, not from the nature from below that's bound to sin and to the law of sin and death. And by virtue of that, the wrath of God that's poured out because no one will fulfill the law through the deeds of the flesh. It's impossible. So as a result, there's only one hope. There's only one ending. And that's wrath. The wrath of God. And the end, the final end, is death. That's the end for all. Praise God, but we can die today. That's a mystery, but we can die today through Christ. We can be, we can be crucified with Him where our nature of sin is removed from us and we're no longer under the law. And their works do follow them. Their works do follow them. Not working to try to please God. Not working to try to keep, uh, to try to do that which is right so that we don't have wrath come upon us or uh, destruction come upon us. But rather, the, the good works of God follow us they come right out of the new nature that's in Christ. Now, Roman, Romans 7, Paul received this revelation of how there could be a death that worked according to that law today that would remove us out from under the wrath of God and the law of sin and death that we might walk in peace with God in the Spirit. He says in Romans 7, do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone only as long as that person lives? That's the law of sin and death. That's the law of Moses. Has authority over someone only as long as that person lives. Well, that makes sense. For example, by law, a married woman is bound to her husband as long as he is alive. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law that binds her to him. So then if she has sexual relations with another man while her husband is still alive, she is called an adulteress. But if her husband dies, she is released from that law and is not an adulteress if she marries another man. So my brothers and sisters, you also died to the law through the body of Christ that you might belong to another 
to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. For when we were in the realm of the flesh, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us, so that we bore fruit for death. But now, by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law, so that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old way of the written code. Praise be unto God. We have such a glory that we've received through the cross of Christ. Oh my, it's appointed to man once unto die, and then the judgment comes. Jesus died once and for all, for all mankind. And when you receive the life of Christ, you receive the death of the man of sin, and thereby the connection to the law of sin and death is severed from you, and now you are free to live in the Spirit of Christ. The remainder of your life you can live according to the Spirit as God leads you fully into the fullness of that covenant where sin has no more hold over you. Praise God. And we know this is a progressive walk. It's a progression. The Lord brings us out of death. We don't yet see people uh, living immortal lives. First, we have to come completely out of the corruption of sin and fully into the life of Christ, and then this mortal will put on immortality. This is the work of Jesus in our life, and this is the way that's been made for us. Therefore, there is now no condemnation, Romans 8, 1. There is no, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be an offering for sin, and so He condemned sin in the flesh. Praise God that we might live completely according to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death and we've had the wrath of God removed for, from us and now we walk as friends with God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord bless you today.